Husker. The twelfth Inca, the one who led the empire to its destruction Atahualpa, the last Inca who never became a sovereign Francisco Pizarro, the Spaniard who ended with the Inca Empire. IT is the beginning of the third millennium, and I am at the closure of my trip into the past. A world unknown to me until in my innermost I felt a need to find out what befell my ancestors centuries ago, and what will happen to our descendants in the years to come. It is important to understand our history in the context of our short existence to leave our thoughts, so that future generations can judge our ongoing saga according to the thinking of the passing times. Huayna Capac was baffled upon hearing of strangers, and his desire to encounter them left us in doubt of the circumstances in which he died. Did he succumb to the new pest that the Spaniards brought to the New World or was he, at the same time of his illness, poisoned by some of his many enemies? This dilemma is best left to historians. The fact is that Huayna Capac expired far away from the seat of power, leaving a fertile ground for a revolt by those close to him who by then, although from Cuzco, were outcasts of the nobility of the imperial city. In the midst of his delirium he had told his advisers that Ninan Quayosh would inherit the crown only if his augurs were favorable, if not, to pass the crown to Huascar. But Ninan Quayosh died also of the same ailment. Huascar, you are now the Sapa Inca. Nobles. You have heard the news. From this moment on, things are going to be different in the empire. Let us prepare to receive my father's entourage, and send word that all my brothers must attend to his funeral. What is to follow are the intrigues between two siblings, Huascar and Atahualpa. Meanwhile, Francisco was getting ready for his third expedition. In the journeys to the past, I find Francisco Pizarro in the medieval cathedral of Trujillo, Spain, commending his soul to the same saints that his predecessors had prayed to. He is wearing a black robe of the Order of Santiago, an ancient canon of knights founded in San Juan de Compostela to safeguard the sepulchre of the Apostle Santiago. As I listen to the ethereal sounds of the same pipe organ that chimed in his childhood, I see Francisco fervently looking at the effigy of a defying warrior saint charging on a horse against the Moors, while pointing a sword to the skies. The very same statue that at one time countless of Trujillanos implored before taking the lonely road to Seville on their way to the Indies. Francisco has returned to his roots as an Hidalgo, son of somebody, to ask the Christ of our burdens to help him in the conquest of Peru. The solemn mass over, I warily approach him in the manners of our Indian upbringing, the submission to the white conqueror. Don Francisco, I am Condor Sol, a descendant of the Incas. I come from the future to find out who you were and why. I have seen your bones in the Cathedral of Lima, but I want to know about your soul. I hope that you will understand the reasons for this unusual trip to your past. Who are you who wants to identify with that large vulture that I have not yet seen? Don Francisco, it is after that great bird that I have named myself the soul of the condor, which is the desire to fly in the emptiness of our nothingness over the mountains of treachery. K.V.A. Ombre. What are you doing in Trujillo? You have a semblance that is very familiar, although not like the ones I have seen. Definitely, you are an Indian. Are you not? Yes, I am. However, in this encounter, I want to be treated as an Inca descendant and not as an Indian. Dot. Damn. I am confronting a man from the future, and not an Indian of the past. Man of the old world, I hope you keep that in mind for the remainder of our encounter. Kono. I have been dead for five hundred years not knowing if what I did to your people was good or bad. That you will have to ponder for the rest of your eternity. To me, you are an enigma. I don't know if you were an evil person or a man of your times. Tell me, who are you? Vamos hombre. What can I tell you that you don't already know? I prefer to talk about my adventures. Then you can decide who am I and why. For sure no un hijo de puta, pero un hombre con cojones. It is the year 1529, and I find myself in Spain after 27 years of absence from the mother country. We have just finished our second expedition to the land of your ancestors, and let me tell you that getting to Peru was the most desperate moment of my life. 
My God! I am fifty-two years old, I should be commending my soul to the Almighty. I have spilled so much blood, and I don't know if I want to talk about my life. Mierda! I could have lived comfortably for the rest of my life in Panama. Instead, I squandered all my fortune in this madness of conquering the empire of the Incas. Don Francisco, you knew of the rewards. Otherwise, you would not have proceeded with the venture. Yes. But in the end I lost everything. No, because you will live forever in the pages of history. Nevertheless, I understand that you were in awe when you had your first glimpse of a great ocean on the other side of the New World. Oh, Elmar del Sur? Yes, the Pacific Ocean. Tell me what was it like the moment when you and Balboa realized that there were more lands to conquer. I was not even thinking in those terms, but Balboa was after hearing of a civilization farther south. He recommended that the government be moved from the east side of the peninsula to the west coast for the explicit purpose of exploring the southern hemisphere. The king sent Pedro Arias de Avila to govern Panama after we founded it in the year 1519. Balboa explored only to Porta Piñas in the Gulf of Panama. After more failed adventures, Pedrarias, as the governor was called, entrusted Pascual de Andagoya to continue exploring. In 1523 he reached the mouth of the river Viru, where he found a tribe under the cacique Birakit or Parakeet, hence the lands to the south were called Peru. There, he heard more news of a rich empire. Andagoya fell ill, and he had to return to Panama. Those unfinished expeditions and the knowledge of rich lands waiting to be conquered prevented me from dying in oblivion, like the rest of those who had come to the new world to be rich. I was a nobody when I was born, I knew I wanted to be somebody. Now I am a man of titles, and I haven't even conquered Peru. Don Francisco, how did you get to the land of my ancestors? After the unsuccessful attempts of Balboa and Andagoya no one had the foresight to undertake these ventures, but I did. To make it possible, I needed partners. I found the vicar of Panama, Hernando de Luque, whom I had known in the Darien. Can you imagine, a man of God with a desire of conquering? And why they called him, Hernando el Loco. He had money or connections to people who had. Then I recruited another ambitious man, Diego de Almagro, to be in charge of finding, equipping, and supplying the vessels needed for the expedition. How about you, Don Francisco? Were you that immaculate? What were you going to do? I am not free of human faults, and I don't hide them either. In my case, I became the sole captain. Once the partnership was formed, Almagro began to look for a boat in the steamy coast of Panama. He saw Balboa's original craft that was rotting, and waiting for someone to revive its truncated glory. Ten months later the embarkation was put in shipshape to navigate as the Santiago. Meanwhile, we were able to cajole 114 soldiers, if we want to call them that, because most of them were fugitives of the law. With inexperienced men, meager supplies, and four horses we left on our first expedition on November 14, 1524, but not before receiving the blessings of the Almighty.